Hi guys. So today I'm doing a paint over critique of a piece sent in by Jennifer Miller. So um, the story, uh, kind of the context behind the story that she gave me is that it's a little boy who is fascinated and loves bees, but he's afraid of them because they can sting you. So, um, and she's kind of hoping for this to be help her towards working in children's books. So that's the perspective I'm going to come at when I'm critiquing this. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right in. So first off, uh, great drawing. Um, I think it really shows the personality and kind of the emotion being evoked. Um, but there's a few things we could change first off that have to do just with the structure. So um, the first thing I did is I sketched it out again. And we'll move, let's move this underneath so we can look at it. We'll put it back. There we go. Okay, so um, the first thing I did was just kind of restructure uh, his body. So over here, his shoulder is sticking out really, really far, and it looks pretty unnatural, especially for a little boy. So I brought that way in, brought that down. Um, to make it look a little bit more natural, especially if his arm is right here coming up and then it all of a sudden breaks backwards and goes to his shoulder. That looks really weird and uncomfortable. Um, even coming like this would mean his arm is really long and this one's really short. So it doesn't really make that much sense. So I brought it down a little bit more to make it a little bit more believable. Um, let's see, I also put a little bit more of a slope in his back. Um, so it looks like he's bending over. Um, See, anytime you want to create visual interest in an image where there's two characters that are interacting in some way, um, the closer you put things, their faces together, the the more it looks like they're um, interacting and you know having an emotional connection. So what I did was I brought the flower stalk and curved it towards the boy's face and put it a lot closer um, instead of curved away because that. It doesn't really make it seem cohesive, but now that it's curved towards his face, it's very clear that he's looking right at the bee. Um, another thing I did was his ear was a little bit too big uh, for his head, and his jawline as well was really big and really pointy, which makes him look kind of like a man, like a little tiny man with a small body. And so I made his jaw a lot less prominent, and I made it smaller. I also rounded off his nose a little bit more and moved it down lower on his face. And then his eyes, um, uh, they were just had like a really sharp angle to them, which made him look like, um, I don't know, almost like stressed or like terrified. And we want him to look more like curious and like kind of sad, you know, cause he wants to touch the bee, but he knows it's going to hurt him. So I got rid of that bottom eyelash because it was just really dark and it was uh, it just made him look really shocked. So I got rid of that down here, um, brought his eyes a little bit lower, um, leaned his head a little bit forward. Um, also with the neck, his neck is really, really big in the original, which makes him look again like a man. So, and it's really long as well. So I shortened his neck, brought it closer to his body. I uh, made it skinnier so he looks more like a little boy. Um, his back foot, I made it a little bit bigger so it matched the other one that was out front. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I did structure-wise. Um, just those few changes really make him seem more innocent and childlike and inviting. Um, really amps up that cute factor. So um, after I did that, I went ahead and added the flat colors. So for the colors, uh, I really like the way you did the hair. I thought that it was awesome. It has a really great movement to it and it looks really, you know, energetic. So I just kept the hair. Um, for the colors, I added a little bit of warmth to his ears and his nose and his cheeks. Um, it just makes him feel a little bit more real and alive um, and more friendly. Um, I pretty much copied the same color palette. I just saturated it a little bit more. Um, and then as well as on a layer beneath that, I did the flower and the B and stuff like that. Um, I also situated it on the page more so that the point of interest, which is really right here, was in the center of the page instead of 
uh, off to the side. It makes it feel a little bit unbalanced because this is what we're wanting to look at, right? Not necessarily this, it's this. This interaction is what's important in this story, right? So I centered that more in the middle. And then um, just to give it some more uh, life, so because right now it seems kind of flat. Oh, I forgot, uh, as well as the shading layer. So then I on a multiply layer, I added the shadows. Um, you want to avoid, so right here, um, is what's called a tangent where it just connects exactly from like where your where your points and lines inter interconnect so like right here this straight line that connects right here to the corner of his jaw is kind of distracting and makes it it makes our eyes see a weird shape instead of just a shadow right and so um, breaking that up a little bit having it go back behind his hair and stuff like that um, as well as dropping down onto his uh, shirt a little bit I also put a shadow underneath the collar because um, I figured light wouldn't be hitting there as well as in his hairline because he has some pretty big hair that's hanging over his head. Um, I put a little bit of shadow underneath his nose um, and right here in his eye because it gets pretty dark in there a little bit under his lip just to give it a little bit more depth and form. And then also over here for the flower and then underneath the boy and in the jacket under here I put some shadow in. So. Um, after I did the shadow is when I s decided to give it a little bit more life. So I did an overlay layer with kind of like a reddish brown color that fades to purple. Um, and I'll turn it on normal layer so you can see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on normal. I just use the soft airbrush and uh, airbrush these colors in and then I set it to overlay. And it gives it a really nice gradient and a lot of warmth that makes it feel really alive. Um, like the sun is hitting him or something. And then on top of that layer, I did another layer where I put in a texture, um, just like a brown paper texture. I'll show you what that looks like as well. So that's a texture I put in. Um, I put it down to about 27% and then I set it to overlay, which just gives it, breaks up the shapes and color a little bit more. It's very, very subtle, but it adds a lot. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's all I have for you. I think you did a great job, and uh, I looked at some of your other work, and I think you're going good places, Jennifer. So thanks for sending in your work. If you also want to see any of your pieces critiqued, be sure to send them in. Um, the email is austinbatchcritiques at gmail.com, and it is in the description. Um, and if you like this video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe and like. Um, I do stuff like this every day. Uh, either tutorials, speed paints, uh, interviews, artist pep talks, critiques, stuff like that. So uh, be sure to send it in and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.